Hi, my name's David Langton, Product Director at Matillion. Today we're going to look at the new features in version 1.39 of Matillion ETL. So let's dive straight in. Version 1.39 brings three new data staging components to all Matillion ETL platforms. Salesforce Marketing Cloud Query, Redis Query, and Splunk Query. Each of these components connects to its respective service and can pull data into a permanent table on your target data warehouse in accordance with the data source chosen and the columns selected. Across all platforms, both RDS Query and Database Query have been given a basic mode. Before, users only had the advanced mode, which required them to write SQL when running their queries. To avoid writing any SQL yourself, just choose the basic mode and configure the component's other properties as normal. With basic mode selected, the Matillion UI will present configurable properties for you to choose your data source, columns, and data source filters. For further assistance, just click the Help tab for Matillion's in-client documentation. New to Matillion ETL for Redshift are the Mandrill, Recurly, and Snapchat data staging components. These, like other data stages, connect their respective service. However, users will notice that these components offer a streamlined configuration with certain parameters changing depending on the data source that a user selects. It's also worth noting that each of these three components only write to an external table. Some of the data, therefore, might require flattening via the nested data load component. Matillion ETL for Redshift now offers users a default storage location. To access this feature, simply right-click on an environment in the bottom left panel. Then click either Add or Edit Environment. Click through the Setup Wizard to Redshift Defaults and there's now a default bucket field. Test your configuration works and then click Finish. Then, when using a data staging component, the S3 staging area property has an environment default. This default is the bucket we set moments ago. We can edit the staging area manually if we wish, but unless otherwise instructed, the environment default will be selected. New to Matillion ETL for Snowflake is external table support. External tables sit on Snowflake without themselves holding any data. Instead, these tables reference data held externally, such as on Amazon S3. This process introduces two new components. First, the Create External Table component, which creates an external table and uses a user-defined stage to point at an S3 location. Users can assign a relative path within the S3 location and the component will find and load any data that matches the path and the file type. The second component, Refresh External Table, syncs your external table in Snowflake with the existing external data. Any changes to the external data require the Refresh External Table component to run to then reflect the said changes to your data. Also new to Matillion ETL for Snowflake is the Pivot component, which lets us pivot unique values from a column into rows, aggregating as we go. In this example, we introduce some data from a table input component. Our amount column contains unique data, which we're going to pivot. Our aggregation, configured in the pivot component, will be a sum calculation. The value columns that we will be creating are based on the month column, and we've pivoted into distinct columns with the values Jan, Feb, March, April. Now the component has run, we've got our new columns from the original month column and our amount column has gone, leaving behind aggregated amounts located in their respective months. Matillion ETL for Snowflake hosted on Azure instances now feature the Azure Blob Load Generator tool found in the Components panel. To begin using this tool, simply drag the icon onto the canvas and a setup wizard will load. The purpose of this tool is to bring data into our warehouse from Azure Blob Storage cleanly and easily. Also new for Matillion ETL for Snowflake instances hosted on Azure is support for listening to and writing to Azure Queue Storage outside of the previously released Azure Queue Storage message component, which only allowed simplistic messages. 
When we run the job, the success or failure message will correspond to our configured queue for each. Over in our Azure portal, in our storage account, we'll navigate to queue service and can observe our created queues. We can create a new queue if we wish, and if Matillion ETL has the correct credentials, it will automatically detect a new queue. Great, so those are the new features of Matillion ETL 1.39. For more information, head to matillion.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates, and thanks for watching.